of the Quran is so clear, so crystal clear about the fact that God is one unique being without partner, father, son, holy ghost or whatever that that doesn't provide enough of a basis for one to try to argue that the Trinity exists in Islam in a way. Let go ahead, yes, you had the other question, right? The question is that there is going to be how to do the stuff. There are two different types of containers, and the person that has to be sold, a whole of the same person, so the part of it, how to do the stuff, how to do the stuff, how In relationship to his heartbeat? Well, I wouldn't say that the taking of the soul is related to the heartbeat because you have people in India who practice yoga who can stop their heart from beating. Yeah. In general, when somebody has his heart beating, <coughs> stop the thing hit from his head. No, many cases a person's heart stops beating and they hit him on the chest and start beating again. They bring the electric... Uh, Electro, the hit of boot, it starts beating again. I would like to supplement the brother's question, the Buddha. Which part of the hymn is from? Which is so? Which is so? Which is so? Which is so? We have no authority to say. We cannot say it is situated in the heart and it's connected to the heartbeat. No. Whether it is throughout the body, infused in every cell God alone knows we do know that the body can function to a certain degree without the presence of the soul because if you hook up the person to the heart lung he is dead and his heart can still keep beating and his you know fingernails growing and you put in as long as you keep giving him nourishment he can continue but he is dead. You take the machine off him, it all stops. You keep the machine on and it keeps going. So, so this is what I'm asking you, sir. In this nowadays, the modern life, sir, this is something that if we can't turn the heart, then we can't turn the heart. That's why it's no problem. As long as you understand that the heart is not the key. It's not so easily transplanted anyway, you know. <laughs> it's like, let's not make it easy, but you know, there is God. There is no relation to the next question. Yeah. Now, the person that got um, the nation to his own heart, the person that, who might get to see the right to be in the world? No, no, no. We are the other person that went to the study, the police, something like that. I want to go back to the only way. Now, being in the nation, the nation that who has been in heart to somebody that which the present life in people is going to be a matter of that or how <coughs> could you put it in view of the Well, I, I don't think that um, for you know the, the majority of scholars who hold that you know the donation of, of organs is allowable. And there is a body of scholars who hold that it's not. That you cannot transfer any part of your body to anybody else's body under any circumstance. There are those who hold it. But you say, given the opinion of those who hold that you can, the transfer of you know, part of your body to another person's body, I mean, even if that person is an evil person, a bad person, whatever, that doesn't you know, affect you in terms of standing before God on the day of judgment. Because that person is going to die, his body is going to fall apart. And when God, you know, brings you back together to be resurrected, you'll be resurrected as you were. You know, he will take and gather the atoms from wherever they are and recreate you. It doesn't matter that one of your atoms was in somebody else or whatever. It doesn't matter. You know what happened? They bury you, you die, your body breaks up, you know, it's absorbed into the soil, rain comes, it's carried through, it's picked up in the root of a tree, it grows into a banana, somebody eats the banana, it's inside them, and... It's not, we don't really give any 
special significance to that. You know, it doesn't really affect our situation on the Day of Judgment. It's perfectly okay. Yeah. Because as this man was doing, remember there's only two more chapters coming after Qul Wallahu Ahad. And he was doing it in every rakah. He would start off with Qul Wallahu Ahad. So be sure he was not saying Qul Ahud Ibn Rabbil Falak and Qul Ahud Ibn Nas every time after each one. No, he was going, maybe going to Bakara, going from all over the Quran. So it is not required that you follow the order in the recitation. Uh, of course, you know, a number of people hold that it is preferable. But uh, we don't have anything specified by the Prophet Muhammad to that effect. In his own recitations, you'll find examples where he recited in one <coughs> rak'ah, one surah, and another rak'ah, surah which came before it, or a part of one surah and a part of another surah. Prophet's journey, which is known as the Mujarrah, which is soul, both, or body? Both. Both the soul and the body. This is the opinion which is the most authentic. You have a body of people who hold that it was just a journey of the soul. But if you look into the actual events which the Prophet uh, described and his companions described, you will see there is sufficient evidence to indicate that this journey was not a journey of the soul. Because when he informed the people of Mecca, if he was telling them something which happened in a dream, which was not him bodily going, they would, uh, they would not, it would not be no big thing for them, you know, they could accept that, you know, you dream, you go to sleep, you dream, you, you went to America, and you were in the United States doing this or doing that, and you came back, it's all in a dream, nobody's going to make any big deal. But if you told me last night, I went to America and came back, it's a big deal now. And this is what, Cause, you know, the, the pagans of Mecca to think that this, they could cause Muslims to leave Islam when they related the story. And you had some weak hearted Muslims who did leave Islam when the story was related to them. Also, on the way back, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu on his journey going, he saw certain things, you know, uh, on his way back, he, uh, stopped and drank from a person's, uh, they had a, a jug of water, there was only a little bit left in it, and he drank it. Uh, there was uh, some people who had lost a camel, and they were searching for it, and he called out to them, gave them indication as to where the camel was. These things he came back and described, indicate it's a physical journey, not journey only on the soul. And also, the, huh? Well, there are a number of things. There's one narration which said, that Prophet Sallallahu said that, you know, when he went on the Isra and the Mi'raj, he came back, his bed was still warm. This is something physical. I said, all these descriptions we describe here, these are all physical things. Could you explain 